Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sapkoviak, and we are talking today about the Ascend H10 kayak. And uh, this is going to be kind of a multi part video because I'm going to do some work on it as well, too, and set it up how I want. You can actually see it in the bed of my truck back there. Um, I'm going to roll in here in a minute because I've been watching. I've been watching this kayak for over a year. I knew I wanted it. It's a hybrid, almost canoe kayak mix. So it's got the it's got the weight capacity of a canoe, stability of a. In, it's, you can stand up and fish in this thing, bow fish from it, stand up and cast. So the stability is off the charts. It's got the depth and storage capabilities of a canoe, and yet it's ultra lightweight and it, it rolls like a kayak. Um, so it's this really interesting combination. Of a of this boat, and uh, but it comes in. It, it's only 55 pounds. Amazing seat, all adjustable, um, tons of storage, and it holds 400 pounds in a 10 foot kayak. You can see it's just sitting in the bed of my truck right there, just sitting there, and it doesn't even come up over the roof or anything. I mean, there's only like three feet of it sticking out in my my ram here. I mean, just such an amazing uh, boat. So I'm really excited for it, and uh, but I'm going to show you here uh, that. I, you know, to give you a couple examples, you can see the different colors. But first, I, you know, I show a video here. I'm going to do a couple quick clips of me when I saw it at Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops and looked at it there where you can see the gray version. And then I went and picked this one up at Mega Power Sports up by me and Gaylord because Mega was the only place in the state, they're in a Ascend dealer, but they're the only one that had that brown. Okay, you'll see the, the titanium gray color, which was nice. And I thought about buying it as well, too, at the Bass Pro Shops. That Bass Pro Shops was, you know, three hours from my house uh, when I was looking at it. But to go down and go buy it now would have been three hours. Where Gaylord is only 45 minutes from my house, and they had the sand or the Desert Storm uh, brown color that I wanted. So it was kind of no brainer to go get it there. But this way you're seeing both of them when you see it in. Uh, uh, Bass Pro Shops, it's open. It doesn't have any of the covers or any of the bags or any of that stuff with it, but you get to see it in comparison to some 12 footers and other size boats. So I'm going to show you that clips a little bit. Then it's going to come into the clips where I bought it at Mega, where you can see it all closed up with the covers and all the stuff on there and all the benefits to it. And then I'm going to show you uh, when I get it home here, which I'm on my in my road on my road right now. But when I get home, uh, I'm going to bring this thing in the garage and I'm going to strip a lot of stuff off of this i'm not going to set it up like it is uh the rails are coming off the covers are coming right off the hooks to hold the covers are coming off i'm going to add some of my own things i'm going to set this up as an ultimate hunting bow fishing that kind of thing set up and like i said i need to make some changes uh from it which i'll explain when i do it so we're going to go ahead and get into this and start showing you uh you know these clips from you know so you can see so you know if you want to fast forward through the uh, Bass Pro Shop part or through that you know there, there's options here for you but I'm going to run both of them so you can see them so stick, stay tuned Alright guys here I am I made it, I am at Mega Power Sports this is in Gaylord, Michigan, this is an amazing place, bought my uh, last snowmobile I bought 10 years ago when I quit sledding but they did it here and uh, they gave me one of the best prices, their prices are always really good and uh, they are also a carrier of Send kayaks kind of like the same ones you get from bass pro and from uh uh cabela's but they carry it here too and they had my the desert storm colored the h send h the h10 the here that I, i've been wanting for a long time i've been looking for this kayak for quite a while um you guys have heard me talk about it on the podcast and here it is but it is kind of a hybrid canoe and kayak so it gives you the best of both worlds adjustable seat that's the seat. You got your side bags. You got flip out uh, cup holders under there, adjustable foot pads. But what's nice is you have all this storage space in here. It's all open uh, with these expandable masks so you can put things in there that are taller. But you have that big front area and then this huge back area as well too. Same kind of thing. And you can take these right out. But tremendous amounts of storage in this. And with that deep haul. It's very much more, it's more canoe than it is kayak, yet it only weighs 55 pounds, and you have a 400 pound capacity rating on this. You got the rod holders in the back, you got your um, rails all the way around it for putting fish finders, depth finders, anything you want to mount on there, extra rod holders, tackle box lockdowns, anything. And uh, you got all that stuff to it. And it, the way the keel is designed on this with this tunnel design ridge in here that runs through this thing, 
very very stable for stand fishing too so if you want to bow fish out of it you can you want to stand and cast you can and the thing's only 10 feet long it's kind of amazing i'm excited to get it home but we've got ice still on the water you can still see there's snow over here and stuff we uh you know we're not ready for it yet we're still a few weeks out before water's you know open but uh, i'm excited it's going to be one heck of a hunting boat right here for georgia uh great boat for here in michigan great boat for everywhere this thing is just amazing like i said i've been watching it for months you know since uh since october watched tons of reviews on it just an incredible boat that is considered a lightweight kayak at only 55 pounds that's pretty light for something this substantial and uh, this big but this boat is going to be amazing so i just bought it and uh pretty excited about it you can find them also if you know if you're not by Gay if you're up by gaylord or in michigan come give these guys a check like i said mega power sports here you look at uh right here you can see right there and their prices on everything are always phenomenal like i said i bought two snowmobiles from these guys in the past when i was riding articats and uh they you know i i you know how i am i have my bow my or my safe thousands course I, I finagle everything i get a deal on every single thing there is out there i never pay full price on any cars trucks boats you know my ram you know you guys have heard the stories before that you know it's a sixty nine thousand dollar ram uh diesel right there that i got for fifty one five uh you know my camper was thirty nine thousand i got it for twenty thousand eight hundred my renegade 26,000 I paid 16,800 I mean I go on and on about the deals I get well mega here this place is one of those ones that's very open to negotiation they do very good on their deals I mean their pricing is good already and they're willing to work with you they got all kinds of stuff in here uh, right now their showroom is still kind of set up for uh, in between you can see they got a few sleds out here couple golf carts they got but they usually have a little bit of everything in here um, you know they got tons of side-by-sides quads you can see here, scooters, boats, you name it. They got everything, especially this one. I kind of want to take this guy home with me, but my wife would yell at me pretty bad. But pretty much anything you're thinking of, huge service department, huge parts department, they got it all here for you. Pontoons, you name it, it's here. And uh, like I said, they, they work with you and they're really good people. Even chainsaws and uh, Husqvarna too, which is getting harder and harder to find in Michigan. Nice to have because those saws are amazing. So anything you can think of, pretty much right here for you and worth taking advantage of. So don't be afraid to stop by, check them out, see what they got. And like I said, they're one of the few in Michigan to carry the amazing Ascend line of kayaks without having to go to Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops. Not that I'm opposed to that, but like this particular sand color one was not available in stock online, not available in any store in Michigan. They had the titanium one, the gray, but this brown color, only available here at Mega. So I ended up getting it. I'm pretty excited. I'm, I'm fired up. This is going to be a great boat. And uh, like I said, a lot of fantastic stuff. Once the water is uh, available and we can get out, I'll actually do some good review on this thing. But very, very excited for this boat. We're going to use it pretty well. And, uh, you know, 649 bucks, same price set anywhere you buy it at because that is a, a send set price. So any Cabela's Bass Pro Shops here, prices are all pretty much the same anywhere you get them at. But what an amazing boat. I'm pretty fired up. So, all right, that kind of like a little, I guess, almost an unboxing, a walk around of it. But uh, I am excited. I have one and we are going to use the crap out of this thing is going to be an ultimate hunting boat boat fishing boat fishing boat um you know i can fit this in the back of my truck without having to even put the tailgate down you know it just sticks up a little bit it's only 10 feet long yet it holds 400 pounds of cargo capacity and you can stand stable in it and stand up and fish from in a 10 foot long boat that and it only weighs 55 pounds pretty unheard of so I mean, look at how easy that is, you know, in a little short bed diesel, but I mean, it just sits right in there. I don't got to mess with it. Just, uh, I mean, how easy is that to just throw it right in the bed of the truck? But there it is. You can see it all opened up here now uh, because I took those covers off to put them in. But like I said, tremendous amounts of storage room in this kayak all through there. It's almost like I said, it's more of a canoe than it is an actual kayak. Total hybrid canoe kayak kind of setup, but with tremendous amounts of space inside of there for all your gear your bow all that kind of stuff um and having uh and 400 pound capacity like i said just incredible but you know so simple so easy just throw it right in the bed of the truck like that doesn't you know it's not taking up too much space not sticking out far you can tell it's not really even going to affect gas mileage much because it's not sticking up much higher than a roof i mean it just doesn't get easier than that loaded it up one man real easy i mean just a great boat so we can't can't wait to get it on the water and see what it's all about if you are uh 
you know if you're looking to learn how to do that stuff don't forget there's a link down below if you hit that where the title of this is you hit the little down arrow next to that, it'll drop it down it'll take you give you all the information on those courses all that kind of stuff it's all right there for you so all right we got that canoe here it is in the garage now we are getting ready to do some work on it first thing i got i'm removing uh these i am not going to be using these to go on there whatsoever um i may use a bag to dry one maybe i don't know but these covers uh, that go on here. I am not going to use those not even a little bit I am going to pull all these hooks off of here that are around there. These are coming off uh, I do not want them snagging on everything So since I'm not going to use that netting over this I have other plans um, But I am take so I'm taking a little screwed in. I don't know if those are screwed or riveted. I hope they're I don't know uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna have to see but I think I'm pulling all them off of there I think is what I'm gonna do is take them off of there. I have some other plans for it um, This pipe right here. This is going to be uh, Keel guard for the front and rear. This is this uh, This conduit pipe. I think I, I'm pretty sure from what I've seen on YouTube I can uh, cut and mold this just like I do my kydex and uh, I might make some keel guards out of this I paid seven bucks for that pipe one and a half inch uh, underground emt pipe is what this is and i'm pretty sure i can mold that and uh, turn that into uh, keel guards for the front so you can see how that is on the ground there so that i can protect that spot under there so that when i'm dragging this uh it's not getting damaged uh so we're gonna see what i can do so i got some stuff in mind here but uh now i'm out here it's time to turn the heat on and uh set some stuff up and see what we can come up with all right, my keel guard is on the back. That's how it ended up being right there. So it does curl over a little bit, but I my first attempt, uh, which was this one, I tried everything with. I even tried cutting those out, notching them. I can't get it to bend around there. The reason for it is, as you look at this boat, it is way too, it's not like a kayak. I mean, look at that. That is a hard 90. And trying to get a pipe to bend around there without bubbling out on the sides is near impossible. Just can't, can't do it. Um, and I would be in that hard without doing some weird thing or something and I'm just too lazy So what I did is I took that and I ended up I do still have it where it rounds around uh, But this is on the back. This is the back end This is what I wanted protected so that when I pick this up and I drag it This dragging across the ground and stuff is what's going to take the abuse This is where there was already a little scuffing on it just from them moving it around So that is now going to protect that that is sealed that is on there I can actually pick that boat up from that that's on there how I put it on and basically what it is is it's, it's that pipe there's videos on how to do this but i cut the pipe i used my heat gun and i bent it or softened it up put it on there like i said my intent was to curl this around the front but it just could not happen uh you can see this is an attempt from a different one too uh like i said i tried a few times and failed miserably um so i ended up cutting it off there and doing that and then stretching it as best i could but like i said i do go around there this is the back end uh but anytime i pick this up now that is going to be uh, able to come off and that is removable um, with heat and with a pry like screwdriver and prying it I've seen people do it because I use tape um, I use this stuff right here where is it uh, this is what I used right here this tape which is this stuff right there uh, 60 inches of uh, it is uh, where's it was that on the front cover yeah here's the front of it this shows the rest of it actually it's right here I got another one I think yes I do Right here, this is what I use. This stuff right there. Um, you know, outdoor, indoor, outdoor, uh, Gorilla, uh, 15 pound per, or one pound per four inches of strength. Uh, and then, like I said, once I set it on there, I had it formed, preformed, and set and everything. And I basically, all you do is cutting a pipe and fitting it on there. You know, I clean the edges up a little bit. You can see here with my grinding wheel, you can see all the dust there. Um, right there all that stuff but that's what that is that's uh you know but uh and obviously i did wear a mask when i did it so nobody give me any crap um but anyway uh but then i just took that and i lined it with that tape all you know there's five pieces of tape inside of here stuck it on there and then i heated it again with the heat gun to seal that bond but like i said i can lift that boat up from that that is not coming off unless i want it off so that is a replaceable keel guard that i could if i ever did wear through this which that schedule 40 pvc look at the thickness of that um you know that's not coming off of there and uh but if it did i could actually that's not open gap that's shadowing um as you can see there it's not open um but uh but then if that ever did come off um or i ever wanted to take that off because it wore out i could take that off now on the front 
My backup plan, which I'm going to do because of this very hard 90 angle, um, I am the uh, Gator Guards makes, and I'll put a link to it down below for you, but they make a uh, a keel guard. It's almost like a Play-Doh. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a plastic, basically a soft plastic, but you put it on and you can. It's a strip and it goes on and covers this. So I'm going to put it from here up to here. This whole thing, it's three inches wide. I'm going to cover that. It's pretty thick. It's almost like that stuff, um, but you can mold it and plant it and then you put it in the sun for an hour and then it sets and gets hardened to where it's sandable paintable everything and it is also a gray color like that uh it's not super cheap at 50 bucks but uh i am going to put that on here and run that guard um on there just for the front of this thing just for the heck of it i think it's worth it that cost me you know this mod right here will cost you about uh five bucks for the uh thing of tape and about three bucks for that piece of pipe if you don't want to buy a full size piece like i did but just to buy a little piece of pipe three bucks so for a ten dollar mod for a replaceable keel guard that without me messing around and screwing around with all this crap that i was doing over here and trying with all this stuff once i decided to just do it this way i'm going to say it took me about 12 minutes Okay, all I did is again, there's videos on it, but I took here and I cut a piece of pipe 15 inches long I went over here. I laid the pipe on my bench That's why you see this straight edge here. I laid the pipe right here on the crack of my bench I pushed my straight edge against it. I took my marker whoosh, Right along here and I made a mark on that pipe then I used my heat gun and I heated that pipe up. I just set it in here to keep it from spinning. I set that pipe there. You didn't have to. Actually, I don't even think I used that on the last two. I think I did it only on the first one. But I took my um, heat gun and I ran it right along that, that color line. It was on there and just like that. And I used a carpenter knife and just cut right down the line. When this is soft, it cuts like butter. So I softened that edge up on that line and just cut it with a straight edge or with a knife straight on down. And then I just heated it up and opened it. Set it on there and molded it and then let it cool. You can see I put a little water on there because I'm doing it by myself. So that way it would cool quicker and uh, done. So keel guard completely finished. There it is. And like I said, I am going to take, uh, I, if my kayak was like a normal kayak that had more of a taper to it, I would have done this on the front as well too. And uh, I would have been completely happy because it is a cheap mod. But given that mine is a hybrid kayak canoe with that very hard front end, I just don't, there's probably ways to do it if you round out the sections and measure it and do the trigonometry and algebra and all this crap and get them to bend. I'm not doing all that. I just wanted something on there to protect it. And I, me personally, before I go messing with all that crap again, for the back, something like that, sweet, simple, and easy, took me about this, like I said, a 15 minute fix right there. For the front, I'm gonna spend the 50 bucks and put that gator guard right on there, cause I don't expect much damage to happen to the front. Um, I'm not pulling up into like concrete, uh, launches and things like that. When I do go to those, I pull over on the side in the grass and I come in off the side of the boat. I, I don't do that too much, but so that Gator Guard one will work perfect on there. Uh, and it's very tough and durable and it'll last many years. So that's how I've got that done so far. All right, see with that rear keel guard on, even at that extreme angle, which nobody's going to pick up a kayak that high of an angle to drag it out. I mean, that's over waist high. So even with that extreme of an angle, <coughs> you can see that that keel guard. 100% protects. See how nothing, none, none of my kayak is touching the ground. And like I said, it wouldn't even be on that extreme of an angle. It just happens to be a five gallon bucket I stuck under there uh, to show it. But when I'm dragging that kayak across the ground, that keel guard is the only thing that's actually gonna be touching the ground or digging into the gravel, things like that. So just a little extra protection clause on there. And like I said, I'm gonna put that one on the front just to protect me from uh, hitting things it'll just wrap right around here, which I will do um, I did decide I'm not going to take these off uh, Reason for it is if I decide later I want to sell it people may want that thing on there um, You know that cover I'll never use it But I'm I, to, to drill out all these rivets and then have all those holes in there if they were screws It'd be different, um, but I'm just gonna leave them. So I'm not gonna mess with that too much So that's basically it. It's pretty much done. What I do love Is they give you underneath here? You can see them right here. You have rings, okay? You have a tie down ring there, tie down ring right there. You got one here on this side, and you have one on this side. And you also have them here in the front 
and right here. So you have those extra tie down D rings, which makes it really nice to be able to, uh, you know, connect. So I'll put some leashes on that. So when I set my pack in here, I can put, hook a carabiner to my pack. So if my boat goes over and capsizes by chance, I'm not losing my pack because it'll be tied off to that under there. Uh, same within the back, my tree stand and sticks. When I throw them in there, I'll actually leash them. I got two rod leash holders right here, um, and I'll probably just put a carabiner on those with a piece of paracord. Um, I'll probably drop them right down this tube just so they're out of the way and handy, but when I throw my sticks and stands in there, I'll just grab that leash and hook on it. Just again, in case I, I hit a sleeper or something and it takes me over, I'm not fishing around on the bottom of the river trying to find a tree stand. It's connected to my boat. So um, little things like that that they give you are nice. Uh, and then I'm going to put a actual piece of paracord around this. Um, and then I'll have a leash in there too that will then let me connect this if I tie it off somewhere You could tie it off to these but I don't trust that as well um, I'd rather tie it off to this so I'll probably just have a leash there where I can connect that and tie it to a tree um, When I'm in the well, you know when I'm out hunting and doing stuff and um, I think that's about all I'm gonna probably do with this all right, we got the gator guard on. This is my back one. This is that plastic one that I made out of PVC, that back one, which I need to be real thick and strong because I need it to hold up to dragging um, on there. On the front, I told you I was going to use a gator guard patch, and that's what I did. Uh, here it is right here. Very simple. It is thick, but not as thick as that back guard is. This thing, this PVC, that schedule 30 PVC is pretty thick. Um, but uh, I put it on there. Now mine looks a little rough here. And the reason for that is I made the mistake in not reading the directions. The key important thing is to remember with this is it's UV activated. So it's soft and pliable. But as soon as UV light hits it within about five minutes, it's hard. Uh, so I, start, I had it sitting out here in the sun. I got sun, cloudy sun. But um, I put it on here. And by the time I already got it started here, it was starting to harden up on me. So I had to really fight. And I ran out of time and it got hard. So mine's a little crinkly on the corner. Plus this boat is such a hard rounding but if i'd have did this in the garage in the shade i probably would have had more time to actually because it's almost like a play-doh when you put it on to fix that and flex that but that was my mistake um but this guard it's hard already um and that's pretty good it sticks right on there but it's going to protect that from hitting any logs um uh, you know coming up on gravel bars anything i do it's going to protect that keel um, and then I also took a four inch section about that big of a section and saved it as an actual patch So I have that set. I'll show you that in a minute, but there it is That's basically it sweet simple and easy and again my mistake here So when you do it read the directions they say to do it not in UV light because it sets really fast So um, and this is what cures it so I made that mistake But again for what I'm doing with this thing. I'm not worried not even a little bit I did try and sand some of those humps off so that pink will re-dry um you know, it's almost like a hard fiberglass resin is what it is, uh, but it's on there really good. And like I said, when it's uh, done drying, I may hit it with that sander a little more to clean it up, but um, that will protect the whole front of that boat from any impacts or anything like that. And for 50 bucks, um, you get that whole thing and then it turned it into a patch as well. And I have the patch saved. So if I ever need it, this is my little dry bag that I'm going to use inside of there. I got my leash in there um, for tethering that thing off. And then I got, but that's a whole patch, you know, right there, that big patch of another piece of that uh, um, gator patch. So if I do happen to crack apart or damage something or uh, let's say, for example, um, on here where this, uh, this edge is, let's say that I hit something and I put a hole in here. Um, you know hit hit a rock and put a good gash and it was leaking water I could simply put that patch right on it and it'll cure in, in minutes So um, so well worth it and like I said I could not get the PVC to make that hard 90 degree angle uh, Without doing the same thing as this wrinkle and I knew it would um, I just figured with this I could have probably smoothed it a little better and if I did it inside I bet I could have um, But I made the mistake of doing it in the Sun and I had less than five minutes before this thing was hardening um, But like I said it will do exactly what I want it to do and protect it so i'm very happy with that setup on there uh even though i did make the mistake but like i said that runs in the water nobody sees it anyway i'm i don't even i'm not even remotely worried about it and i'm glad it's on there to protect it all right well there is the finished boat done and set again we got the keel guard on the back the big heavy duty one we got the keel guard on the front which is the uh gator tracks uh or gator guard patch which, like I said, just uh, some protection there. Now, here's how I set it up. I am not using, I told you, I would not use uh, the front cover, the rear cover, and I'm also not using the bags. However, I will say these bags 
um, are pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie. These are pretty awesome bags. This one on this side is all wide open. Two mesh pockets on both sides. Big pocket on the inside. Velcro closure. And two D-rings to hang that on. It's a very nice bag. Without fail. It's a great bag. Um, this one I was going to use, but I changed my mind. This is the other one that goes on the other side. Now this one has a actual dry bag, a zippable dry bag in this thing and with many pockets on the inside and it is a, a dry bag zipper and then two ones on the outside I got with my leash in there but um, I was thinking about using this one. This is a very, very, these are very nice bags. <coughs> However, I am not going to and I am not using those covers. That stuff will just be saved in case I ever sell it. Uh, so what I did to this here, looking at paddle-wise, both of these do work on this too, so that is a nice feature. I just set this up, but um, one of the things I did mount on here, you can see it on the side, because I have these tracks. See, so you got these tracks on here, 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 and here. I put a kayak holder that goes right into this track on there, so that's nice. So instead of having to have my paddle sit right here, I can actually take my kayak paddle and just clamp it right there, and then that holds my paddle and keeps it from moving. So when I park this thing, or if I'm stand up fishing, bow fishing out of it, that cat paddle is set right there. Um, I'll put a link for those down below. I got two of them. Uh, the other one is still right up here and is ready to roll if I need it. And that would be this one, but it shows you that they are this thing right here. And it's got these, uh, the tabs on the back to mount that into a um, you know, so I could actually put another one on there, but anywhere there's rails. Now you can also buy these. I'll put a link to it. If you have a kayak that does not have the rails, they sell this in a screw version that you could bolt right to your kayak. So you could actually just bolt it right to anywhere you wanted to on there. Um, this one, these are designed to sit in the rails like that, but it holds that paddle very nice on there and keeps that in there real stable. So that is not coming out unless I want to pop it out. So that's a, a good thing and it works with both canoe paddles and kayak paddles, the round one. So, um, so I did put that on there, so I'm excited about that. This is the dry bag I am running. Same thing as the other one, I just clipped it, but it's much smaller. All I need in it, that's that gator tracks, or that gator guard patch piece. And then there's my leash and an extra carabiner. That leash is so that with this, which is paracord tied right to this, in a carabiner here but i can hook that onto this carabiner and then tie this off to a tree and have it where it's not just tied to this handle or anything like that or to a cleat it's actually tied right to the frame and i can tie that off and then this is also a leash that i can use um for uh, my backpack and stuff so up here in the front where i normally would drop my backpack in here i can la or feed that through my backpack strap and lash this right onto my bow on my bowstring just in case i happen to go over their branches take something something off I'm not losing it and then chasing it down river so I have everything here with me uh, just lashed in together right on that lash and then in the back back here moving this paddle out of the way I did put two lash or two uh, lash or uh, leashes back here as well too since I have these tie outs right here I tied into that I just stuck and fish this stuff right into the uh, rod holder because I don't use the rod holders but they kind of wedge in there and then I got two leashes, so I can run these, and like when my tree stand and sticks are back here, I can just hook that on, and again, that way if it happens to go over, I'm not losing that stuff, or anything I want to put on there, I'm not losing, and then I just feed all this stuff, just push this stuff back into here, uh, pain in the butt to do one-handed, but I can just shove all this paracord and everything right back down into there, and then stuff that right in, and then I got that whole leash set right inside of that, uh, that rod holder spot right there so it just wedges right in there and set so there it is sweet simple now i just can't wait for the rest of that snow you see i still got snow as soon as the snow is gone and we melt out then um, i'm going to be ready to get this thing on the water and get it rolling and do some hunting and some bow fishing and everything out of it um, my only bummer was that i i screwed up on that gator patch like i told you but like i said it's it's not going to affect nothing I'm, I'm not even remotely worried on it but if you ever do one of them do it in the shade in a, in a close place with no UV light so that you can mold it exactly like you want and not have those uh, those ridges in the side like I did right there. I made the mistake of doing it too quick and doing it in the sun, um, and that's what caused that on there for me. But, uh, but I'm excited to try this boat out. So there's a review on it. I know it's not a water review, but again... 
We're still covered in snow here and ice. I mean, it's a nice day today, but I, I can't get it on the water yet here to show you. But uh, there's plenty of people on YouTube that show this thing on the water and it works good. I just wanted to show you a minute about why I got it, what I'm doing with it, how I have it set up and what my intentions are with this boat. And I think it's going to be perfect. That hybrid kayak canoe capability of this thing, 400 pound capacity, 10 foot long, and super stable, stable enough to stand and fish out of and bow fish. It doesn't get better than that, especially for 650 bucks or whatever they are. Uh, so it's a, it's going to be an amazing boat. And uh, like I said, the couple little mods I did to it, I got uh, about uh, 55 or 60 bucks into it if you count the front patch and then the, uh, the connector on there, the paracord and stuff I had. So not much more involved, but that those guards will really make a difference. Um, in protecting this thing, especially dragging it. I'm not, I'm very hard on all my boats. I'll drag it straight across this concrete. I drag it across dirt. I drag it across rocks. I park them on rocks. Um, having those couple guards on there will just make life a little easier. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.